To show you the basics of compression, how I see them, I'm going to use the UA Precision Bus Compressor. The reason I decided to go with the Precision Bus Compressor is because, as you can see, uh, a lot of the controls that are typical to a compressor actually are labeled correctly, like threshold, and there's handy text boxes showing you what the values are, and this makes it really easy to teach you about the basics of compression. Uh, some of UA's vintage compressors, um, they all have these same controls, but they're labeled differently and don't have text boxes. Um, if you want to see more about the Precision Bus Compressor, you can refer to that video that's also in this series. But for this video, I'm going to use some drums to show the basics of compression using the Precision Bus Compressor. Now I like to break down compression into three areas. Uh, basically, when, what, and how. And when is, well, when do you want the compressor to start compressing? And once it starts compressing, what do you want it to do? And how is, how do you want it to compress? Now let me show you how those map to a compressor. The when is basically the threshold. When do you want it to start compressing? Well, as soon as it exceeds that threshold there of minus 6.5, what is the ratio? So what is it doing? Is it compressing 4 to 1, 10 to 1, or 2 to 1 in this case? And the how is the attack and release. Basically, how quickly does it attack and how quickly does it release? And that really affects the character of the compression. So that's the when, what, and how of compression. And uh, let's give those a listen. So I'm going to crank back the threshold. And you'll see it's going to start going into compression. The gain reduction meter has a meter as well as a digital readout, so you can see the exact amount of gain reduction that you're getting, which comes in handy. So what's happening is the drums are now exceeding the threshold of minus 9.7, and we're compressing. So that's when it's kicking in, when the threshold exceeds minus 9.7. The what is the 4 to 1 ratio here. So 4 to 1 basically means that for every 4 dB past this threshold of minus 9.7, it's only going to let 1 dB out. So say if only 1 dB went past the threshold, it's only going to let a quarter of a dB out. Of course, if it's 10 to 1, it's going to let a lot more out. But we, now if you notice, I changed the 10 to 1 and the threshold there changed. That'll be explained more in the uh, Precision Bus Compressor video. Okay, so that's the when and the what, and the how is now attack and release. Now, a fast attack will grab the transients, as we call them, because these are drums, and the transients are very quick signals. It'll grab them right away and compress them, and you can hear that, as opposed to a slow attack. You can see the volume went up a little bit. There's a lot less compression here because a lot of those transients are passing right through because you have a uh, over 30 millisecond attack time. So that's 30 milliseconds that the transients can get through before the compressor wakes up and says, hey, I gotta do some compressing. So if you wanna try and limit things a bit, keep things uh, under check, you wanna get that attack a little faster. Now the release control, basically once we are compressing and the level drops below this minus 9.7 threshold, the release control tells the compressor how to release control of the signal, basically how to stop compressing. And you can hear how the sound opened up when I used a faster release setting. Typically, you want to time the release setting to the music. So the compressor is releasing before the next large signal comes up. So the track doesn't sound overly compressed. So you can hear I've got it timed pretty well there. So it's compressing, but it's releasing before the next big hit comes. So let's see what it sounds like if I slow the release way down. As you can see, the compressor never does get out of compression before the next hit comes along to push it farther into compression, which results in, well, a very compressed sound. So uh, we'll have to speed up the release. Now what I'm looking for is a setting that works with the timing of these drums, because I want transparent compression. So that's what's important with a release setting. Just think about the timing of the music to help you find the right setting. So we're getting about 3 dB of gain reduction. Let's turn down the threshold a little more and get a little bit more gain reduction. I'll show you a trick I like to do with compression. And that involves the makeup gain. 
I'm going to slow down the attack a little bit too here. See, we're getting 5.4 dB of gain reduction. Here's the input signal. Here's the output signal. So let's turn off the compressor and hear the difference. You can hear that the uncompressed signal is louder than the compressed signal, so that can be fixed easily with the output level control. We can now add about 5 dB of gain, and we won't be really any louder as far as the peak value, because we don't want that peak getting up there. But you can see the peak values here, the peak values here, and we are a little bit above, so we'll back that down just a little bit more. So you want to use the gain reduction meter as a guide to where to set the output level. They don't always match perfectly, but you got to use the meters too. So we're pretty close, input and output, but now listen to the difference. So now it sounds like our compressed signal is a little bit louder than the uncompressed, and that's because we've added this makeup gain. And this is a great way to make drums or any instrument just sound a little louder because we've brought up the average level while the attack and release have tamed the peak level so we're not overly loud. Now we're going to take a little look at the Logic Compressor so you can see how it compares to the UA Compressors. Um, so it gives you a point of reference since you can use it in Logic if you have Logic. Um, you've got your attack control, which is pretty variable. Um, you also have a release control. And like some of UA's compressors, there is an auto release, which helps with some of the guesswork. It's got a ratio slider as well. And uh, it's got this handy readout, which is nice. You can actually see the effects of increasing the ratio to where it becomes a limiter. And another thing that I'm going to bring up in some of the videos is the knee. And uh, the knee basically is a transition from uncompressed to compressed. And uh, there's really um, two main types. There's a uh, hard knee, which is uh, more like a limiter. So it quickly goes into compression, really getting those peaks. Um, with this logic compressor, you can actually get a variable knee until you get to the soft knee. So the soft knee gently eases into compression. Only drawback there is you might have some uh, transients get through. A compressor like the VCAVU, a FET compressor or field effect transistor like the 1176, or an opto compressor, which would be the LA2A and LA3A. So it's a pretty versatile compressor. So now that you know the basics of compression, I'll be applying these concepts to Universal Audio's vintage compressors in the following videos. So stick around for more informative compression tutorials.